Hello, I'm Nishan Anderson, and I'm your host. You're watching Keeping It Real. And today we have um, a friend of mine, Terrence Martin, with us today. He's my guest for the day. We're going to be discussing his career in the entertainment industry. He's worked on quite a few television shows. He's worked on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Blind Date. Uh, he's worked on Chains of Love, Outrageous. And recently, he's worked on the hit show that's been airing on VH1, Flavor of Love. So um, we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we're going to sit down and have a discussion with Terrence Martin. Yeah. For millions of years, they ruled the earth, and then they vanished. What really caused the dinosaurs to become extinct? Was it a giant asteroid crashing to Earth? Was it massive volcanoes erupting around the world? Was it a sudden change in climate? Or was it that they just weren't financially prepared to live out their later years? How can you avoid the dinosaur's fate? by making U.S. savings bonds part of your retirement savings program. Ask your banker or employer. U.S. savings bonds, the safe and easy way to make sure you're financially prepared for your later years. I'm your host, Nishan, and you're watching Keeping It Real, and today we have our guest, Terrence Martin. Terrence, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, Nishan. Good to see you. <laughs> it's nice to see you, too. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Thank you. So good to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how well, you landed in California. I, I'm originally from New Jersey, but my family, we just have this habit of moving around and around and around until we make a stop. Okay. And uh, from New Jersey, at the age of four, uh, we moved to Florida. Okay. And we lived in Florida for many years, 18 years off and on and then uh, finally landed in California about 1976 mm -hmm. and have been here ever since. Okay, yeah. since 1976. Yeah. And what kind of, what, 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 um, what type of work were you doing when you first got out here? Or did you know what type of work when, you to do? Well, when I first got out here, now in 76, I was only, well, I shouldn't say my age, but I guess I will, I was 13. So I was going to school at that time. Mm -hmm. But um, as an adult, um, in 93, when I first got here, um, I was doing uh, something that everybody probably does, ride a bus and, and go to work, and I was working at the bus station. For yeah, the, back I was, then it yeah, was for the, I was working for the RTD. MTA. RTD. M it was RTD it was back RTD then. Back That's then, right. Yeah. You're right. I would forgotten that. Uh -huh. And uh, I worked in maintenance, okay. which I, I am not mechanically inclined at all, so right. I thought, oh, my God, what are these people doing? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't and look at it. Yeah, well, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, 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 you know, I've I'll do anything. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about me. I. That's le legal. Of yeah, course. you give me a job. That's legal. Of right. course, yes. Mm -hmm. And you give me a job and I'll, you know, jump in there. I'm kind of like Lucille Ball in that way. Mm -hmm. Lucy never knew how to do anything, but she'd jump in there she and try it. So I, I was, I'm like that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so you, when you guys settled out here in California, what city were you in? Uh, we were in Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles. We, we lived uh, not too far from here, actually. Um, not over far from on, um, Cur is it Curson? Curson. Yeah, Curson. Yeah. So you, you didn't go to Fairfax High School, did you? No, no, I didn't. I went to Pasteur. Uh, junior high school okay. at that time because I was 13 okay. and then we moved from uh, LA because the schools were just so crazy. Went back to, then? It, yeah, yeah, oh back then it was even crazier believe it or really? not. Yeah, my mom says no, 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 gotta get out of here. Mm -hmm. So we went to Redlands <clears throat> and we lived there for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that and then I, I graduated there as a matter of fact, get, graduated from high school mm -hmm. and uh, and then went on to, to Redlands University there okay. where I... Um, what, uh, did you, what did you major in? Uh, broadcasting. Yeah. Broadcasting was, journalism. Yeah. So yeah. You're, as you got a little older, you wanted your career goals to be, what was your, what, at that time, what was your career? What did My you career mind? goal was and has been to be in television game shows ever mm -hmm. since I was age of five. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bob Barker was my inspiration. I watched the man walk, talk, and I tried to do everything like him. Okay. And everything in my, my profession <clears throat> that I've done thus far, I credit to Bob Barker. Because really? as a kid, I emulated him. 
You know, everything was a game show to me. So you, you're, you're one of the few lucky people. You actually, you went to broadcast journalism school, and then you actually got a career in doing what you wanted to do, and you yes. stuck with it. Stuck you didn't with give it. Up. Yeah, did not give up because, and I believe that it's true of anything. Anything you want, you have to go for. You've got to stick with it, and if it's in your heart, and it's if, if it's a dream of yours. By all means, stick with it. And it's always been a dream of mine to do what I'm doing now. And I am thoroughly enjoying myself. And every year, uh, it gets better and better. And I've had mm -hmm. some wonderful opportunities, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. But did you, it, who, uh, who were, like, how did you, I know people don't just do it on their own. You can have all the degrees and all those, you know, different things under your belt and stuff. What was, who was like the first person that you met that helped you out and like that took you along the way and introduced you to people and opened up some doors for you, doors of opportunity for you? The first person I met here, um, I was auditioning for a game show here in Los Angeles, and mm -hmm. it's a game show that they brought over from England called Don't Forget Your Toothbrush. Okay. And the woman that was the contestant coordinator, her name is Sean First, mm -hmm. and I love Sean. I hope she's watching this show because she is. Well, I'm sure she, she is. is. We have a lot of viewers. So. She is my success story because she saw me in the interview and she said, you know <clears throat> more about game shows and mm -hmm. game show hosts than anybody I've ever interviewed. Okay. And so you from just that, blew her socks off. Yeah, yeah. She was just amazed. And we had stopped talking about the interview for the show that I was auditioning for mm -hmm. and started talking about my life in game shows. Right. And she says, I'm going to be doing two shows that they're bringing back called The Newlywed Game mm -hmm. and The Dating Game. And mm -hmm. we're bringing them back. And I would love for you to be my contestant coordinator. And I said, you're kidding. You don't, I don't believe it. So, so going back to your childhood just a little bit more, uh -huh. when you were younger, did you would just sit in front of the TV and watch the game shows? and? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it yeah. like an escape for you, or you were just you like, Sean, just like you? I would make up, <clears throat> I would make excuses to stay home from school. I'd pretend to be sick just so to I could stay shows. home and watch game shows. <laughs> you were that much of a game show enthusiast. It says, you get out of that bed. You're not going to stay here today uh -huh. <clears throat> and watch Password or Price is Right or whatever, what Pyramid right. during that time. Right. But I loved them. I was so... I was so mesmerized with how the mechanic of it worked, the lights, the mm -hmm. host, the, the applause. It's the almost like a, it's not being at a circus, but the lights, the audience, yeah, and the just energy. The excitement it's, it's of seeing somebody win $10,000 yeah. or $25,000 in 60 seconds. Right. It gives me goosebumps just to think about it. Okay. It was wonderful. Uh -huh. And it still is to me. <clears throat> what, 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 you've worked on several different game shows and you've seen people obviously win money and yeah. stuff. What, what is it like now being on the other end to see them actually oh. receiving it and being there? Wow, what a blessing. Um, it, you know what? Every day, I, 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 I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. It is just the most rewarding thing to see somebody win. When I was doing Millionaire in New York, mm -hmm. uh, our first winner, John Carpenter, won okay. the million dollars. And to stand backstage and see somebody go from, you know, just, you know, down here at $100 to a $1 million, it's something you can't even explain. It's a wonderful feeling. And to be actually in this business now, it's, it's more than I can comprehend. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day I'm just, I pinch myself because I, I just can't believe it. And how does that work when they win those prizes, like when they win cash? But they, it's not, they have to pay taxes, of course. They do pay the taxes, yeah. And we have, uh, and thank God for sponsors because a lot of people say, oh, I hate commercials. Oh. Uh -huh. And those are the people that pay the bills because you right. may hear hosts break the commercial and they'll say, you know what, we got to pay some bills. We'll be right back. Exactly. Those are the people that, that come up with all that's that where wonderful that money. And that's where from. it comes from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's 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 a uh, game shows are are a uh, underestimated art. I mean, they come okay. and they go. And I kind of I talk about game shows like that saying says uh, old soldiers never die. Mm -hmm. They just fade away. Mm -hmm. I think that's true of good game shows because they come and they go. A show mm -hmm. like Jeopardy that's been around for how long? Well, uh, this the syndicated version has been around for about 22 years. But actually, what a lot of people don't know is Jeopardy is. All, is as old as I am. Jeopardy first went on the air in 1964 mm -hmm. with a guy that you probably have never heard of. His name is Art Fleming. Okay. And he did the original Jeopardy in 1964 on NBC mm -hmm. and it ran for like 17 years and then they brought it back uh, in now, the 80s again. You said the syndicated, okay, when people watch it nightly on television, they're seeing new shows, right? Yes. They you, are, yeah. Now, when you say syndicated, because yeah. our, our our audience, they don't know, that right. means reruns? Uh, no, syndication or, means when they have different buyers. They have buyers, and it, it's marketed all over. It, it'll be all over the country, all mm -hmm. over the United, in different markets. Uh, it may be on NBC here, it may be CBS somewhere else, right. ABC. So they syndicate it. They 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 market it all over. Oh, it's not just exclusively for like ABC. Exactly. No. no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
but uh, it's it's a wonderful gift to have syndication too because it means more money <laughs> for the executive producers. For the executive and for everybody, yeah. So, and so mm -hmm. for for si since 1964, is that the longest game show running in? Um, in television, yeah. no, um, because they went off and then they were brought back in the 80s. But the uh -huh. the longest running game show right now is The Price Is Right. Is The Price Is Right? Price Is Right started in 1972, mm -hmm. and this September they'll be starting their 35th year on CBS. Really? 35. And Bob Barker's been at the at the realm the whole time. The and, whole time. And uh, wasn't he the creator, or was Merv Griffin the creator? Uh, Mark Goodson. Mark Goodson. Mark Goodson, who is no longer with us, was the creator of that. And many game shows that people uh, remember, Password, Match Game, uh, and the list goes on and on. And he was what, wonderful. Now, wasn't there one, the, the $64,000 question? or Yeah. yeah was, that that, was, was that an, like an American-created one, or was that a British one? Uh, the uh, the $64,000 question was an American uh, game show. And that was, I believe it was created by, if I'm not wrong, I think Jack Barry mm -hmm. and Dan Enright were the creators of that show. And that, that stayed on quite a while. There were some... You know, uh, people in the 50s probably remember the scandal that mm -hmm. happened with that. And it was uh, like rigged and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have now, um, which all of us game show guys and girls that are that are in the game show business are so happy about. We have a long form that says, you know, there's no hanky panky and this is what yeah, happened. No family, and, you no know, friends. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure everything is on the up and up. So yeah. it's a it's 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 a very serious business. It's a fun business, but the creators and, and the people behind the scenes, we take it very seriously, very seriously because we want everybody at home to have a good time and know that everything is, is on the up and up. Yeah. So a show like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, that one was a British, that's a British game that show. That is that's a British game show. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was brought over from England by um, a gentleman named Michael Davies, right. who uh, I think both of us are familiar with. Right. And he had the common sense to say, hey, you know what, let's bring this thing over here and, and make it a hit. And mm -hmm. wow, what a hit it is. It's doing great. And won a few Emmys, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm your host, Nashawn Anderson, and you're watching Keeping It Real. We have Terrence Martin, our guest, in the studio with us today, and we're going to take it to a commercial break, and we'll be right back. someone did this to your neighborhood, you'd want to get even, too. They come from Asia. They come from Africa. They come from South America. This year, the Zoological Society of San Diego celebrates its 80th birthday at the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Wild Animal Park. You can join the celebration by becoming a member of the Zoological Society. Because while our animals come from every continent on Earth, the support they need comes from you. I'm your host, Nashawn Anderson, and you're watching Keeping It Real. So Terrence, out of all the game shows that you've worked on, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Blind Date, uh, well, Flavor of Love, that really wasn't a game show. That was more a reality show. More reality show, yeah. Um, Flavor what's, of Love. What's, what's been your most memorable show that you've worked on that you've, you, you were like really in awe of it? Because earlier you were saying there's an art to game shows. Mm -hmm. So what game show was it that really stood out in your mind and that you never really could, you never pictured yourself working on a game show like that and you mm -hmm. were just in awe? Wow, that's a, that's a good one. Um, I, I would have to say, as far as being in awe, uh, it would have to be Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And, and like you said, I've worked on several of them, the newlywed game, the dating game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but a millionaire especially because, first of all, I, I had never been to New York. Okay. So that was a treat. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, it would be the responsibility I was given by some wonderful people at ABC. Mm -hmm. um, I had never... Um, worked as an associate producer on a show okay so it was uh, it was a, a great privilege to do that mm -hmm. and uh, as far as how the show ran everything ran like clockwork I mean these people were so professional we worked with I worked with people who hadn't done game shows but they knew the mechanics of, of the show to operate the, yeah to the people it. that I worked with came from Letterman mm -hmm. they came okay. from Rosie at that time Rosie was on and the mm -hmm. view a lot of the people right. that we work with. Our director, Mark Gentile, mm -hmm. was the director of The View. And, okay. uh, and 
And Regis Philbin himself, just, I mean, he would come in, this man would come in in the afternoon. He'd do his morning show. Mm -hmm. And he'd come in the afternoon, and he was just as fresh and vibrant as he was, you know, on the morning show. Right. And we didn't tape the show until about 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We did it as a live show. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would go in at 7, tape until about 8.30, and we'd go over notes at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. go back to the hotel, and be ready for the next day's show. As far as the host, because it looks like they just show up and you know they just read from a teleprompter or whatever. Yeah. For a game show, do they have to do a little bit more research or like know what is what's entailed as yeah. far as for the host? Well, you know what, for the host, a lot of notes. Um, we had 10 contestants on Millionaire, so we had uh, I had producers who would actually do information on each contestant just mm -hmm. before the show. So we'd have cards for right. Regis, and right. they would get, you know, where they're from and, you know, their hobbies, any interesting stories. So it, it would seem like Regis would just go up there and just wing it. Well, hi, Nashawn Howard, oh, I see you, mm -hmm. you know, blah, 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 blah. But no, we had a wonderful band of, of producers, 10 of them to be exact, that would get all that information for Regis Philbin. And that show's went through two hosts, right? It went through yeah. Regis and now Meredith Vieira. And Vier. Meredith Vieira. I did the original version, which was in 99 when it premiered on ABC. Right. I remember. And I did uh, two seasons of that. And then, um, and then once it went to syndication in the daytime, mm -hmm. um, Meredith Vieira took over. Yeah. And the, the, the most you can win on that show is just a million dollars? A million dollars. Well, they had a special that they brought back called Super Millionaire, uh -huh. where you could actually win two million dollars. Yeah. And I think they did the special a couple of times with Regis. And have they and given the out quite a bit of million dollar checks? Oh, yeah. Too? Yes, they have. I don't yeah. watch, I don't follow the show. So. Yeah. Um, you know, and I know the Meredith Vieira version has given out, I think they gave away more than we did. Okay. When we were doing the nighttime. So what's version. going on with that? You know, I, I have no idea. I think Meredith is sneaking checks from behind. <laughs> the, you know, yeah, yeah. But uh, what a wonderful show to work on, though, and a lot of experience for me too, because it was, uh, as I said, I worked with people who had been in the business a long time, mm -hmm. and there had not been a game show in New York since um, the twenty thousand dollar pyramid, which you was hosted really by Dick Clark in history. the seventies. So it was, uh, it was a long time coming, it, but it was so exciting. To have a show, you know, to come back to New York. The contestants, the people, where do they get them from? Where do they, and, and how is it that they seem to have such, we get them, we, where do these, they come from? These people are loony bins. We get them from the, from the insane crazy asylum. crazy people Yeah, like, like myself. Yeah, uh -huh. definitely. That gets um, lucky and ends up working on one of the shows. Right, yeah. Well, it depends on the show, actually, because um, like uh, Newlywed Game, you know, we had married couples. Just We usually put a number up or, you know, we put it on Craigslist or whatever, and, okay. they, and they call us or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, a show like um, uh, Millionaire, you had to call in, right. you know, and you had to do the fastest finger thing that they do on the show. Mm -hmm. You had to do that on the phone. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, a department which was downstairs, and we had nothing but people on the phone, you know, confirming that these people had won. We would actually give them their ticket mm -hmm. that night. We'd book their ticket, and they had to be on a plane the very next, next day morning. to be in our studios. Wow. Yeah. Now, how do the, the, the game shows and the producers, how do they keep track of certain questions and certain um, things that the contestants have been through to make sure that it doesn't come up again so someone mm -hmm. would already know the answer. Right. How do they keep all that because there's so many different shows and... Right, right. We have a great bunch of writers on that show. A good tracking uh, system. Yeah, and they have a tracking system um, where all the writers, and that's their department, we, we can't even go 10 feet near that area. Mm -hmm. So, but they know, they know exactly every question that's been written, every answer that's been given, they keep a record of everything and it's sealed like, they're like in a, in a little hermetically sealed jar, right. and you can just knock on the window, and if they see you, they go, out. Uh, you know, you can't secret. be near there. There's top secret, you know, because contestants and questions, that could cause collusion, right? and uh, so you don't want that. But in answer to your question, um, they have one writing producer mm -hmm. who is over that whole department, Dep and he keeps track to make sure that everybody else is he keeping track. He keeps those keys to that yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. What is, is Ken Jennings? He was the guy who was oh, back on yeah, was what it a Jeopardy or the Price Jeopardy. on Jeopardy, mm -hmm. and he won over how much? Do you can it was I think it was three million dollars. And yeah. he was so good so. that I know he. Had, I was reading in the trades for a while that he yeah. had gotten a deal with. Um, I think it was 
the king one, I forget I think. The, yeah. the, the distribution but he was gonna mm -hmm. have his own show yeah coming out. which I still I hear they're still working on that actually so yeah, that was re that's like really big history in the game show history oh, in the yeah. game show world yeah it's kind of like uh, a show I did win Ben Stein's money mm -hmm. and this would be win Ken Jennings money I guess because right. he's just as smart as Ben if not smarter this man was just amazing we were just talking about him this morning I, I work over at uh, at Sony now mm -hmm. uh, with the producers of Wheel and Jeopardy and we we're okay. just talking about uh, Ken over the uh, uh, over coffee this morning okay. how brilliant he was okay I'm your host Nashawn Anderson and you're watching keeping it real and we're going to go to a commercial break and we'll be right back most children in the world suffer or die because they do not have enough food water or medicine since 1946, UNICEF has worked to provide the world's children with their basic needs. UNICEF is... UNICEF leads the fight for child survival, protection, and development. Call UNICEF, the safety net for the world's children. You can help. Call the U.S. Committee for UNICEF. I'm your host, Nishan, and we're in the studio and you're watching Keeping It Real and Terrence Martin. So we're gonna uh, finish up the discussion. Uh, we were last talking about Ken Jennings mm -hmm. and him winning the $3 million. Yeah. And you were saying that, well, you weren't saying he was smarter than Wim Ben Stein, but what yeah. were you alluding to? I was just saying that his brain, this, this man just has so much knowledge about so many different subjects. And I think everybody was surprised, you know, they, they because, you know, he started winning a couple shows, and they're like, oh, that's great, and, you know, because usually they have like five people, five-time champions, mm -hmm. but this guy was just a powerhouse. He's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know. How and many I mean, episodes were, was he, he was on for like a oh good? Oh my gosh, it was like all summer. I mean, he was on for, I can't even remember how many episodes it was, was but he, Everybody got to know him so well that he didn't even have to check into the gate. Usually we have these little cars that we have to show mm -hmm. to get into the gate over at Sony. Right. Ken would come in, they just go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Because he was winning so much, yeah. did there, was there ever any like suspicion as far as like, you know, this oh, is no. impossible? No, or? no, no. Every, it, like we said earlier, you know, everything is so tight knit now. And I mean, it's just, you know, this guy, he reads a lot, which he told us. He said he just reads. He's and he like studies a sponge. And, He's just yeah, always absorbed. Just soaks things in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you get contestants like that on several shows. I know I can think of some, you know, instances in at Millionaire where we had people that were just brilliant. They just you know, they had just knew this there. information, you know, and and then too, they were smart enough to know when to stop, you know, because right. they get to that million dollar question, <laughs> and it's like, okay, I don't know that. We can stop right here and take the five hundred thousand and run. Okay. So yeah. So let's, because we talked about a lot of the, the, um, the those type of shows in that genre, the reality shows that you've worked on, you've mm -hmm. worked on Flavor of Love and Blind Date. Blind Date. Yeah. Well, Blind Date, that's reality or get, well, that's it's, considered. You know, it's, it's sort of reality slash blind game show. Or, or, or a game show. Yeah. yeah but um, uh, I did a show called Extreme Dating with Jillian uh, Bar Barbary. Barbary. Yeah, from Barbary. Right, the yeah. news lit. Boot Camp, which mm -hmm. was on Fox. Uh, we had a military style boot camp and they won like $500,000 on that on Fox. Wow. Uh, yeah, just a lot of different reality shows, which I really love. Now, Flavor of, of Love, let's talk about that show. Mm -hmm. That was <laughs> that, that was interesting. I remember uh, the, the one guest that stood out in my mind, I think her name was Heidi. Mm -hmm. She kind of looked like a, 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 a cheaper version of Little Kim. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. was up with that show? Oh my gosh, Flavor of Love. This, and and a lot of people, I, I didn't think anybody would remember Flav. Right. Because he had been But they did, and there were so many people watching that show. Oh yeah, yeah, and they still are. They're doing a number two this right is the now, second season, as I hear. Right. Yeah, which I have, I am working not on involved. that. Yeah, I'm not involved in that mm -hmm. at all. But um, we found 20 of the most outrageous women that you could ever find. Mm -hmm. And we put them in this house with Flav. And you guys had to actually, could, because some contestants you guys do, they see, psych you guys get them screened by psychologists oh, yeah, to make yeah, sure they're... The, yeah, during the screening, they had to see a psychiatrist. Right. Uh, we had to test them for uh, various diseases, right. <laughs> which mm -hmm. we did. Because they and were going to be eventually supposed to go on to be in a relationship yeah, with, with this guy, you know. Right. And let me tell you, Deshaun, the funniest thing about that 
mm -hmm. is that, you know, we'd get the board set. We'd had this big board in the <laughs> office, and we'd have all these women for the show that we were going to book. Okay. And I'm serious. They would drop like flies. The doctor would say, um, uh, well, this one is not good. This one's got the herps. This one's got the herps. Wait this a minute. Because my, my audience is going to think, like, this is a joke and this isn't real. You're serious? I am totally serious. These women were dropping like flies. So we'd have to rebook wow. the whole show. And, you and I'm sure they looked all good and clean and pristine. Oh, <laughs> we had, yeah, they were so pretty in the whole nine what? yards. But uh, we would have to go. They had and been around the block. And around the corner and around the neighborhood and the wow. whole nine yards. <laughs> what if, did, did Flav have it, did he know about any of that or no. were people no, making jokes? No, we never, no, we never, we never let I on. I mean professional, right? Yeah, yeah, we never let on to that. But once we got Of course, our because 20, this is all behind the scenes. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, this was all in the office. But it was something that we had to do, right. you know, to make sure that, that he was okay and that they were okay. Mm -hmm. And and he even got tested, you mm -hmm. know. So, and it was, and he came up clean, which, <laughs> well, anyway. Mm -hmm. Love you, Flav, wherever you are, buddy. Yeah. yeah, but it was a fun show. You we had, had a good time. We had a ball. Um, everybody on that cast, including Flav himself, was just amazing. The girls gave us an amazing, amazing show. People yeah. still talk about the show. I, people yeah. that know me, they'll see me what, and they What was really funny to me, too, was when I think they were letting, it was between New York and I remember the white girl, she, they dismissed the white girl in the white uh -huh. <laughs> She She pulled her hair and then she spit at her. Oh, yeah. yeah. And New York went for yeah. her like she was yeah, going to yeah, choke yeah. her out. Yeah, and, and she was. Um, mm -hmm. I was in the house the, the, the night that happened. And she was going to actually choke her and let her have it. But uh, we, we yeah. stopped that. And, uh, right. you know, they went their separate ways. And yeah. now they're huggy kissy. They're fine. They're good. So there was a lot of drama. But there was a lot of drama, a lot of tension. And that's what we wanted. And that's what we, they wanted because we want, that's it's entertainment. Television. At the end of the day, yeah. it's entertainment yeah. and it's all fun. Yeah. And we handpicked these girls. Cause right. And New York, who you mentioned, that's my sweetheart. I found her on Hollywood Boulevard. On Hollywood Boulevard. Boulevard. Yeah, you told me that before. She was walking. Right. As I was going to lunch, and I stopped her, and I said, "You're wonderful. You you have this attitude. You've got to do this." Because she, you said she's like that really in real life. That yeah, wasn't for the cameras. Yeah, she was the hair, and you just know, ghetto she fabulous, had the like walk, she was. And she was just oh, she just knew she was all that in a bag of chips. Right. And I said, and really thought you she was going to have Flav at the end. Oh yeah, she yeah. really and was very hurt when she did. And I it must showed. Say, it yeah, showed. Yeah, it did show. Yeah, but it was a good show. Thank yeah. you for asking about that. <laughs> well, I want to thank Terrence for being a guest on. Oh, our, is it over? Our show for today. It is over. Oh, this is so much fun. I'm your host. Sean Anderson and you've been watching Keeping It Real. Until next time.